One of the most frequently used shell utilities is the cat command. What is the cat command? Well, it's used to concatenate files together. It's also used just to print the output of a file to standard output. For example, if I want to cat my .bash RC file, you know, it just prints the contents of my bash RC out to standard output. In fact, I would say nine times out of 10 when I'm using the cat command, I just want to see the contents of a particular file. For example, one of the common files on a Linux system is your slash etsy slash passwd file. You know, if I wanted to cat that out so I could see, for example, uh, what the users are on the system, maybe I need to find a certain user on the system, what their user ID is, what that user's default login shell is, you know, I can get that information simply by catting out that file. Now, let me CD over into a test directory that I have on the system, and I have some empty files here. I have file one, file two, and file three. Let me actually go into file one. So I'll open it with my text editor, which is Vim, and I'm going to type one here in file one and I'm going to write that and then let's vim into file two and I'm going to write two in this and then I'll save the file and then let's go into file three and I'm going to write three and save that file now let me cat file one file two and file three and you see what it did there it printed the contents of all three files it concatenated them together into one Output. Sometimes on Linux you have very large files that you're working with so you have to split them. There's uh, various commands to split files on Linux. The most common one is simply the split command where I could split a large file into however many chunks I decide and later you may want to put the file back together. How would you put a split file back together? Well you would cat those files, that the, the split files that you did, would put those back together and you could write that to a, a new file name, whatever name you want, and now you've got the original file back together. In fact, let me actually do this. Let's actually cat file one, file two, file three, and let's write this to a new file. We'll call this output underscore file. And now when I do an ls, I have output underscore file. If I cat output underscore file, you can see one, two, three is the contents. If I up arrow to that same command, if I cat file one, two, and three, and then to two of the right pointing chevrons, the greater than sign rather than one, what this will do is it will append the contents of this cat command to the output file, meaning it won't overwrite the file because that's typically what one greater than sign will. It just overwrites the file completely. This will append the file. And if I cat out output, you can see what this did, right? The, it kept the original contents, one, two, three, and then it appended the new contents, which is one, two, three, to the end of the file. Now let's imagine I want to overwrite this output file completely, but I'm not sure what exactly I want to add to it. You know, uh, I, I want to enter an interactive edit mode. Well, I can actually do this. I can cat, and then I can do the one greater than sign and output underscore file. And what this will do, what am I catting into output file? Well, we didn't specify. Well, because I didn't specify, you'll get a prompt and now I can add whatever I want. For example, maybe instead of one, two, three, I could do two, four, six, and then control D to exit that process, right? And now if I cat the output file, you can see, we now have two, four, and six as the contents because we overwrote the uh, previous contents of that file. Sometimes you want to add line numbers to the output of the cat command. So you could do cat dash n for line numbers and then the name of the file. And you can see now we get two, four, six, we get the output, but it did add numbers to the lines. Sometimes when you're numbering lines, you only want the lines that are non-blank. For example, if I go back to my home directory and cat the dot bash RC again, let me up arrow and add dash n for line numbers. It gives line numbers for every line, including the empty ones. But if I, instead of dash n, do dash b for only number the non-blank lines, 
you can see it ignored the empty lines and did not bother numbering them. Another interesting flag with the cat command is the dash capital A flag. What this does, it displays all characters, including your tabs, your line endings, any non-printing characters. And if I hit enter, you can see we've got some funny stuff on the screen right now, including the dollar sign, right? At the end of every line, there is a dollar sign because that signals the end of a line. Now in all my documents, I use spaces. My spaces are always spaces, even when I hit tab on the keyboard. But if you're somebody that does use tabs, tabs would show up here. Now let me CD back into the test directory. One last thing I want to show you is let me cat file one, two, and three one more time. One of the most common uses of cat is simply piping the outputs of cat into some other command. For example, maybe I want to grip for some pattern, whatever that pattern is. Let me grip for, I don't know, did I write one in one of these files? Yes, I did. So it actually did return that. I believe the contents of file one is actually one. Now, of course, I could just grip one and then file one, two, and three and get the same thing. This is typically what a lot of people will complain as a useless use of cat, meaning I didn't need to use cat. I could have just grip one and then file one, file two. If I didn't know which file, you know, contain what I'm looking for, I could get basically the same information, although the output is slightly different. So when people complain about a useless use of cat, depending on exactly what kind of output you want, it's not necessarily useless. Also, if it's a situation where you were already catting things, like I had already been typing cat, file one, file two, file three, and I've already got it in my shell history, there's no reason for me to rewrite this command, you know, by deleting the whole command and then grip one, whatever, you know, just Tack on the pipe, grip, and then whatever it is you're searching for, and there you go. So that's most everything that you can do with the cat command, but if you want to read more about it, type man cat in the terminal to read the man page.